Hello, good morning. My name is Jonathan Truel. I am the Chief Security Officer and Head of Solutions Architecture for Qualys. Uh, welcome to our second Cyber Risk Summit. Today we're going to be talking about attack surface and how to manage that attack surface, including best practices and hearing from other uh, CISOs and technology leaders who have really implemented some cutting edge stuff. So my session today is going to set uh, an overview for the issue we're talking about throughout this summit and specifically address some of the key issues that are causing problems for security teams. The topic is navigating risk in an era of expanding attack services. And I think we start first and foremost with the fact that attack services are, are growing exponentially every year. Uh, we specifically look at traditional infrastructure assets as an example. Uh, and even in the traditional realm of, of your desktops, laptops, servers that are running in your data centers, we look at 30% of those are unknown to the IT security teams. That means that they have no context of whether that asset is being properly managed, the security or risk posture of those assets, uh, nor do they have any assurance that the right security technologies are running on those assets to protect them from threats. And if we dig in even a little bit further, we find that only 9% of organizations believe that they actively monitor 100% of their attack surface. That's a very small number, less than 10%. 43% of organizations spend more than 80 hours just discovering their assets on any given day. So trying to discover those through very manual processes. We find oftentimes uh, spreadsheets and, and other data repositories that are, are being merged and pulled together. It can be an extremely time consuming effort. And then 96% of organizations experience an attack targeting these unknown assets. And as you would imagine, uh, again, the likelihood of success of those attacks are often very high uh, because those are unknown, unmanaged assets in the enterprise. And so these are traditional assets. Now let, let's talk about the other area of risk, it, and that's code. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to pinpoint exactly the precise number of lines of code that are currently running around the world, but it's in the trillions. Uh, and again, this is five times more than there are stars in the Milky Way. And I think what we're, we're learning and we're all coming to realize that we're all software companies. Again, whether you're in hospitality, whether you're in financial services, there are software developers who are writing code. Sometimes it's for uh, consumer facing applications, B2B enterprises. Uh, sometimes it's just internal services that are making your operations more efficient. But there's a ton of software being written. And of course, with more code, there are more vulnerabilities. Uh, and, and until we perfect, um, you know, the static and dynamic testing, you know, we can be assured that for every thousand lines of codes, a certain percentage of those are gonna contain bugs or vulnerabilities in them. So that just continues to expand even more, again, the attack surface that is facing security teams. Now, when we look at non, what I call non-traditional assets, and, and this is a big shift in the cloud world, right? And so, you know, as we see organizations shift left, if we see uh, new uh, development paradigms using containers and container orchestration, the number of these kind of um, um, short-lived assets has really increased over time, and so, we're seeing over 27 billion devices connected today with a projection of 55.7 billion by 2025. And again, oftentimes these assets are, are unlike our traditional assets. They're, they're short-lived. Uh, they come online for potentially 30 minutes, an hour, they get torn back down and then rebuilt. So again, the speed at which this is happening uh, in these non-traditional assets also presents unique challenges to security teams. Now, one of the, the advantages that we, we have as a company and being in business for 20 years is we have a, a large corpus of data that helps drive our innovation. 
And our 2023 True Risk Report specifically looks at the weaponization of new vulnerabilities and specifically how long attackers are taking to exploit them versus how long it is taking the blue teams, right, the, the defenders to patch those uh, vulnerabilities. And unfortunately, vulnerability weaponization is, is typically two, two times faster uh, than the weaponization process. And so we see this gap of 11.1 days where even those that are, are moving extremely quickly still have this delay in time where exploitation can happen. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as it comes into the context of, of Qualys innovation and the platform we're building, but it's a really um, big challenge for security teams is the speed at which our attackers move often far exceeds the, the pace at which we can move to defend our networks. Now, let's talk about risk over time and again, why speed is so critical when we're dealing with attack surfaces. And, and when I talk about attack surfaces, um, I use a very broad term. I, it doesn't mean just your external attack surface. It means you know any of the ports, services, vulnerabilities that are exposed in any code, any digital asset that teams are trying to protect. Now, risk goes up with time. And as we look at this, this uh, chart here, uh, as you start from the left, there's usually a time that it takes to detect. Uh, you're trying to identify specifically that vulnerability on that asset across a range of different networks and sometimes globally disperse. Teams are trying to prioritize which vulnerabilities to focus on, trying to understand if there's even a patch available. Uh, oftentimes it's not as easy as just patching a vulnerability. Oftentimes there's no patch available, so firewall rules or IPS signatures need to be updated. And then you have time to communicate uh, and again, the larger and larger and the more globally dispersed an organization gets, the more difficult it is to communicate across all of the necessary teams to ensure that that patching and remediation is, is, is working. And at the end, again, that's your time to remediate, right? You know, so as you move from left to right, you know, you're counting down in hours, but oftentimes days, as we saw in the last slide, that it's taking organizations to deal uh, with any type of exposure within their environment. Now, that's kind of your tactical challenge. And then CISOs, um, you know, if you're like me and you, you have multiple stakeholders who you're working with and trying to influence, there are additional challenges with this, this uh, process of getting a handle over your attack surface. And a lot of that for CISOs has to do with ensuring that your strategy is aligned to prevent the organization, and then it's very clear to all of the individual stakeholders that you report into. So, as an example, uh, CISOs often have to report to the board, and the board wants to know how much cyber risk do we have? What is our total exposure uh, in a language that they can understand that the, the company currently faces? You also then need to um, coordinate with your CEO. Your CEO is the head of the company, and more and more so if you're publicly traded or have um, really a focus on um, you know, proper reporting and enterprise risk management, your CEO really needs to understand if the strategy that you as a CISO has put in place is showing uh, the right effects on the risk reduction. So how do you communicate that to your CEO? And then you have auditors, both external auditors, you have internal auditors. Uh, oftentimes now, if, if you do any type of business to business type of um, company, you're gonna have your, your, your business partners who are also auditing you and wondering what your uh, risk is before they'll buy your products and services. And so they're trying to understand, are you compliant with either a regulation or the contracts that I've put in place? And then finally, and potentially most difficult is, is your chief financial officer. Your CFO is wondering, what is this return on investment that I'm getting from the cybersecurity budget? And then if I invest more, what is the level of risk reduction I get? And of course, all of these are, are asking you to prove it. No longer is it, is it uh, sufficient to provide an answer based on intuition. You're looking for good, hard quantification 
around the risks that are associated with each of these items. So when we look at the CISO cyber risk concerns, you know, I think some of the specific ones that uh, come top of mind and that, that you're trying to build an organization and a strategy around are, what do I have in my environment? And, you know, I think years ago, it was enough to try to answer that question once a quarter, once every six months, once a year, but that's no longer sufficient as we talked about the gap between how long it takes to identify and remediate versus what an attacker can do uh, with an exploit. So you need real-time information on your environment at your fingertips so that you can cut and dice it in such a way that you can get answers to specific questions about a new vulnerability, a new specific software that seems to be um, compromised based on a supply chain attack. All of that information you need real-time at your fingertips to do a good job. The next is, what is my cyber risk at any moment across my organization? And again, that needs to take into context traditional assets running in your data center, cloud-based workloads, supply chain um, contingencies that you may have to deal with, partners that may have access into your environment, and then, of course, code-related issues. If you have developers writing code, what is that level of risk in those environments, and how does that aggregate up uh, based on the risk appetite that, that your board and your senior leadership have agreed to maintain. <clears throat> and then at any given time, you're trying to decide, both from a funding and a defensive uh, posture standpoint, how am I reducing that risk? And what is it going to cost me to reduce that risk? And then equally is, am I protected? Uh, today, based on the existing threats that we see targeting organizations like ourselves, uh, new and emerging issues? Am I confident that we are protected from those threats? And then how am I doing compared to others, right? Uh, whether we like it or not, uh, in the business world, we're often compared to peers. Uh, and especially when we start talking to boards and, and C-level executives, there's an importance of saying, am I doing better or worse than peers that are operating in the same environment that I am? And you need to be able to answer those questions continuously with up-to-date information. Now, there are some um, real interesting dynamics and challenges around getting to cybersecurity risk. Uh, and I think first, you know, trying to get a handle around the attack surface. Uh, and so you're going to need a solution that is easy to deploy, has multi-sensors that work in numerous environments, so that you can pull together external assets, internal assets, cloud-based, mobile. Uh, you may also have <clears throat> OT systems or industrial control systems. In all of those, you need to be able to look at that attack surface. <clears throat> you then need to prioritize based on the true risk associated from those vulnerabilities. And I think for, for all of us that have worked in this environment, we often know that not all vulnerabilities are exploited. Not all, all vulnerabilities have the same level of exploitability due to challenges, access to technology. And then there's the organizational context. Um, so a vulnerability may be highly exploitable within one context in an organization, but in your organization, based on compensating controls and other defensive measures, the, the likelihood of exploitation could be really low. And then we have to think about <clears throat> how do we do more with less? Uh, and, and again, I think we've all faced this over the last 12 to 24 months as we saw economic issues really put pressure on security budgets and teams. And so how am I doing all of this work, all of this asset discovery, risk prioritization with less, with fewer tools, fewer teams to get that done? Now, this brings us into the Qualys approach. And I'm gonna lay, again, the foundation of what others will talk about in more detail uh, in terms of how we go about solving this as a company. <clears throat> so first, it really has to be from a platform perspective. Um, you need a unified risk-based approach in which a platform is used. So it can't be multiple sensors and multiple dashboards connecting for you know, cloud workload is treated differently. A traditional laptop is tr 
you know, treat it differently by a different product. It needs to be one consistent platform with one consistent data model so that you're getting all of that information and it's shared across all of the different modules to give you the fastest time to discovery and remediation. You also need a tool that automates a lot of the work that we've talked about. So if we take a step back and we think about a previous slide from the discovery to the risk prioritization to the remediation can take a significant amount of effort, especially as you get into the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of assets. So automation has to be built in. And of course, what does automation get you? It gets you speed. Automation gets you speed to remediate, which brings down the chances of you facing uh, a, a data breach. And so that is the key that we're looking at as we think about our approach. And then finally, cost. As we become cost conscious, as we're trying to maximize and get the full potential out of our products, it's not enough to think in silos. We have to think in solutions, solutions that solve the overall problem. We don't want an asset discovery system that doesn't work with a vulnerability detection system. We don't want a configuration management system that doesn't have the context of vulnerabilities associated with those configurations. If not, the cost of trying to tie those together with API calls and other teams can get extremely high. And so when we look at the Qualys True Risk platform, what we're looking at is a true platform approach that is solving the problem of bringing down your risk across your organization, no matter the type of asset that's involved. And if you look at the very bottom of this slide, one of the ways that we achieve this is with the different types of sensors that we have deployed. So multiple sensors that can adjust to multiple different environments but all of it pulls the data back into one database that gives you that full data model so that you can identify that risk and that asset. And all of that information is shared if you read from here left to right from asset discovery, vulnerability and configuration kind of weaknesses, risk remediation, threat protection, and then at the end is compliance. And we think of compliance as an outcome of good security, not necessarily something you buy. And then at the top is the idea of uniform, da uniform dashboarding and the consistent scoring of risk so that you can have those conversations consistently across your enterprise. So your DevOps team is speaking about the same risk categories as your vulnerability management and your patching team. Your CISO is having the same risk conversation with your board <clears throat> as he or she is having with your CFO. And it's extremely important that that uniform visibility is something that is shared across the entire organization. And Qualys makes that possible, again, through our platform approach. And then when we really dig in, and I think this is one of the key benefits of having this platform focused on cyber risk reduction, is the view that you get where here we're showing specifically a Qualys True Risk score of 900, which is critical, and it's based on the fact that this asset can be highly exploited. We have real-time threat intelligence, so the best threat intelligence that we subscribe to and bring into the platform, helping us determine what is most likely to be exploited. And then we really get that faster remediation time because now, we know the criticality of this asset <clears throat> based on its importance to the organization, all of the different components running on it, so whether it's end of life software, software that's no longer supported, the different certificates uh, that are being used potentially for TLS communication, weaknesses in the configuration, the overall attack surface, we now know we absolutely have to prioritize these assets because they're the ones that are contributing to the most risk to our organization. Now let's dig in just a little bit to a, a few of the key components in our product set that really help drive this uh, overall risk focus. So the first one is our cybersecurity asset management system. This gives you that holistic, uniform view of all of your assets in your organization that your security team 
is required to protect. It also gives you the business context in terms of the business owners and the prioritization that need to go into protecting that asset. Because again, if an asset is running your revenue collection services, or if it's contributing to directly to the revenue that your company makes day to day, those have a higher priority and can be prioritized within the platform. It also uncovers all of the patch management components or lack of patching, your application security weaknesses, all within one easy to query uh, database. And then a companion to that is obviously your external attack surface management. And this uh, specific component of cybersecurity asset management is focused on your externally facing uh, digital assets. And the reason that that's called out, as you, as you rightfully know, is that attackers can immediately get access to those from the internet. So the minute you discover unmanaged assets or exposures that could be exploited, those are the ones that you have to prioritize first and foremost because they're so easy to attack. And then I think the other strategy, and you're gonna hear a lot more about this that we focused on as a company, is it's not enough just to discover your assets and detect vulnerabilities and configuration weakness. You need to do something about it. And I, I think this is really a key differentiator for us is, is you see us move into the space of saying, let me make it easier for you and your teams now to remediate this risk. So if you look at our, our portfolio of products, patch and configuration changes are essential. You're able within the Qualys platform to equally not only discover the vulnerabilities, but have a patch that's linked to all of the associated CVEs by risk and do an auto, no touch, no code patch for those assets. Now also, there are vulnerabilities that require additional configuration updates and changes. Those cannot be accomplished with just a patch, but we have our custom assessment re remediation capabilities that allows teams, similar to a patch, to apply configuration changes. These could be registry updates or other changes to the operating system that are essential to ensuring that it is protected from these attacks. So when you bundle all of this together, what we see is a significant decrease in the time it takes using our platform from going from that discovery of the asset, the vulnerability detection, prioritization, and then the big thing, the remediation. Because all of that is seamlessly built into the platform. There's automatic workflows based on the risk of those assets and how teams configure the solutions, but this gets you to a faster time to remediation. And in the end, that means that you're achieving your strategy as a CISO quicker with less costs and that you're more consistently reporting on risk across the organization as it matters. Now at Qualys, we are on a mission to reduce cyber risk in a measurable way. This is what guides our company every day. This is what drives all of our employees internally as we're building out our products. It's about driving down that risk in a measurable way. And so now you're gonna hear from Shailesh, our Senior Vice President of Product and some of his team about how we're actually building the platform and getting into the details of the products and solutions that are aimed at helping you meet your mission and the demands that you're facing from your leadership. So I'm excited that you can spend more time with us. I look forward to the active conversation and questions that will come our way. And I'm excited for you to partner with Qualys to get more security.